So I am Dean Tribble, I am CEO of Agoric, and I'm pretty sure you can all hear me. I'm here to talk about a lot of things, including uh, general purpose uh, applications in JavaScript. And I have a button? Yes. So what Agoric is built, built, not now building, but what Agoric is built is a platform for building general purpose applications on blockchain written in JavaScript. The native programming language is not EVM, it's not WASM, it's not anything. It's the number one programming language on the planet, JavaScript. Um, so you can use your existing knowledge, you can use your existing tools, but more important than that, it has a JavaScript framework. It has a library like React or like Vue, like you know, the best practice for building large applications and interesting applications is to be able to build, use components that other people built and put them together into a rich and, comp and sophisticated application for your users. And so it has that kind of framework, but instead of being about mouse clicks and rendering, it is about pricing and price comparison and escrow and exchange and all the things you want for b blockchain applications. So why JavaScript? Right, okay, so these are, this is from Electric Capital's uh, 2023 study of developer ecosystem. And you can see we have Polkadot that claims 1900 and you know, you never know, these numbers are approximate. We've got the Cosmos ecosystem of which there's more than 1,700 people here. No, there's about the right number. Um, but these are daily active or monthly active developers. And then we've got a few smaller developer ecosystems like Solana. And then there's Ethereum squatting on 6,000 monthly active developers. Ethereum has been around for a long time and it's still 6,000 monthly active developers. And we might be afraid of that for Cosmos applications, but let's put it in context. That's crypto. These circles are to scale. <laughs> that is a nine inch circle going off the screen, right? Or well, it was on, on the size of my computer. So we are still at the beginning of getting developers and what we need to get developers is to meet them where they're at and where they're at is JavaScript. Where they're at is VS Code. Where they're at is automated tooling and CI and all of the standard that mainstream developers expect every time they're building an application. So that's where we're focused. And that's what we bring to the table because we're gonna bridge and reach out to those people and get them into the Cosmoverse, the interchain, the Cryptoverse. Okay, and what, how are we doing for that? June was amazing. We have been working for five years on this stuff, and it was sort of at the end of June that we realized we had really crossed this incredibly important threshold. So we deployed the general purpose platform with independently upgradable uh, JavaScript smart contracts all communicating with each other asynchronously where you could have independent governance for each of these things, and, that, and, and where very different than the rest of blockchain, right? In the rest of blockchain, your applications are built in, you know, five second chunks or simple transactions, right? If you think about an AMM, it's awesome. There's a lot of money in AMMs, but the transaction is simple, right? Money come in, do some math, money go out, right? Adjust two numbers, you're done. That's your AMM. Yeah, you can be a little fancier than that, but it's, but it, but it's this very discrete thing. Most software in the world has long-running transactions that are not five seconds at a time, but might be five days or five months or, or even five minutes, makes a complexity in Cosmwasm, in Ethereum, in all of these infrastructures where you do, you know, your five seconds of computation and then you pack it all up and store it in the Merkle tree and then maybe hopefully sometime someone outside the chain says, could you make some more progress on that? So you unpack it and you do a little more work and then you pack it back up and it's a lot of complexity. Um, we've talked to a couple of people out there about what it takes to do that, and it's very complicated to do that in Cosm, Wasm, and Ethereum, EVM, Solana, all of these systems. In our system, you have a JavaScript program that just runs, and I'll show you some of those later, but it just, but what we've done is we've packed into state sync in, Cosm, in, in, in Cosmos, where you can take the Merkle tree and be able to download it into a new machine and start running, and now know that you're starting from the consensus state of the chain without trusting any one provider. We can do the same with snapshots of the entire ecosystem of, of computing contracts, running in the midst of their transactions of long-lived JavaScript programs. 
built into these, built into these, uh, uh, into state sync and Cosmos, so you can just start up a new node in minutes and be running. So those are sort of the bottom layer things. We also have implemented the the core of the economy, right? The design of Agoric was to be able to deploy businesses that operate with a stable coin, that pay gas with a stable coin, and that are able to back the stable coin with other collateral. The core of being able to build financial instruments is having a good oracle that can tell you the outside prices of things, the real world prices of things. And so there is an oracle network for Agoric. It was driven by Simply Staking, who I know are floating around here with their ent entry point t-shirts. And it's using uh, Chainlink tech underneath. And we've worked with Chainlink to make sure that they like this network and all those kinds of things. So it is a future extensible network where you can build smart contracts where one of the DeFi Legos is the price of stuff, which is really, really powerful. And then finally, we launched Interprotocol Vaults. And I'm going to talk about these in reverse order, so I will, I will uh, uh, take off my uh, Agora hat and put on my Interprotocol hat um, and go on here. All right, so Interprotocol. Most of you have heard of this. It is an over-collateralized stable coin for the Cosmos ecosystem. Vaults are the MakerDAO style vaults, right? Vaults are bring Atom over IBC, in the future bring the Osmos, Staked Atom, Wrap BTC, Wrap ETH, ST ETH, all of these things, anything that is potentially reachable over the, over the interchain, bring it over as collateral, and mint IST against it, right? Or, you know, originally this launched, the first version of this launched last November, so IST has been out there on Osmosis, on Crescent, on ShadeSwap, um, where you could bring USDC, USDT, or DAI bridged over Gravity or Axelar to buy IST. So it's out there, it's being integrated in applications already, but what launched in June is the vaults. And that's really the big core of it, where you can, where it unlocks the billions of dollars in asset value you that we've all built across numerous chains, so now you can leverage it to get IST, to get something where you can mint IST and swap on osmosis, right? And you can have a, a sequence where you, can, where you can just do that all, and people are starting to add UIs where you'll be able to do that in one click. Now, uh, I, I will say, minting, mentioning that, Osmosis just, I think, passed the uh, governance vote to add several gas tokens to Osmosis, of which IST is the native stable coin, the native stable token for, Os for Cosmos that is now able to be used as gas on Osmosis, which means, again, mint and swap. You can bring your atom over, mint some IST, take it over to Osmosis, and just buy stuff. Right? You don't need Osmo, you don't need another account, you can just do it. So awesome stuff. And it's all, you know, it was all originally designed to be IBC native, to use the assets that, that we've created, that you've created, that other chains have created, and bring them all together into an economy. And I could say a lot more about that, but I'm instead going to use that to talk about programmability. So now I go back. With my, with my Agoric hat back on. So, the key to vaults, right, they are over-collateralized vaults, right, where you have, where I bring in, you know, $2,000 of Atom, and I mint $1,000 of IST, and if Atom were to fall that much, which, of course, it will not do, but, you know, it's volatile, you know, some probability, right, you know, where, where Atom fall, where, where if the asset falls in value, you know, for a, for a period of time before climbing back up, the, the vault system needs to sell it to cover the amount of IST that was minted against that asset, right? And so that you've got an Oracle network, it has to signal into the network, you have to have smart contracts that respond to it, something has to be driving this, and then based on this, the, 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 the vaults that are determined have to get sent to the liquidator, liquidator to be liquidated. And that turns out in many systems to be complicated, fragile, and et cetera. What does that look like in JavaScript? What would a JavaScript programmer, one of the millions of programmers out there that program asynchronous systems every day in JavaScript, what would they expect? And what can you do on a Gork? So what's going on here, right? I don't know if you can see a laser. All right. Price authority. That's what we call the Oracle. There's reasons for it, and they don't matter. It's just price authority. This is saying, return me a promise when the, when the price of the collateral I've got is lower than the liquidation trigger value. That's it. That, that was the semantics I wanted. And I get this promise, and I just await it. 
And now this will just pause and sit there and it'll go swap out to disk or whatever it does, but it'll hang out for three days or a week or a month. And it's when that promise resolves, it resolves because that Oracle network that we mentioned, it signaled in, it came to consensus, it computed the median so that one weird price doesn't all screw it up, right? And it will, uh, and it will then propagate up, and this contract that just said this simple line with this DeFi Lego, which is a price, suddenly will resolve this promise. It will go on, and it will go, yeah, I'm going to call Liquidate. I'm going to hand this vault off to the liquidator, right? So that, too, is, oh, well, here it's returning the promise. This is inside an async function, so this Liquidate function is async, and behind the scenes, it's doing something async. You don't care. You know, you know how to compose that stuff in JavaScript. This is what people expect, right? So what does that Liquidate look like? Well, this was an element of the Liquidate. This is somewhere down inside the code. And these are all code samples slightly cleaned up to be easier for you, minus comments, minus some error handling, just to make it easier. But the fundamental here is an offer. In, in, in Agoric, it's been offers since we talked about this in 2019, I think it was. You may now hear a lot about those kinds of ideas under the name intents, right? So what's an offer? I've got to give. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the vault, I've got a debt I've got to cover, I will give you this collateral, but only if you give me back that much IST, the debt, the debt that I need to cover. And if you can't do that, you don't get my collateral. Right. Now, I don't much care you know, what the contract is here. I mean, I do, because I would like to, it to accomplish this goal. But no misbehavior by the contract, no upgrade of the contract, no rugging of the contract, can take my collateral unless it gives me thy debt, unless it pays me the IST that I'm asking for that will then cover the debt of this contract, right? Okay, so that's the basic offer model, and you'll note that, of course, that's async. This is just an async operation from one contract to another where all of our contracts can compose, and the fact that that happens to be on this chain versus another chain, well, you'll see that that doesn't matter very much either. Okay. So let's take another example with, with one of the teams we love to work with, Akash, right? They, sell, they resell compute time on clouds in the Akash chain. And they're doing interesting and advanced features with, with um, uh, GPUs for AI program, you know, programming and all that. So they now have an audience of non-crypto folk, right? These are real use case for real users out there that need real value delivered by blockchain. Okay, and sorry you can't quite read that, that's saying, so one of the use cases for end users is I've got this job running, and if it runs out of money, it will be terminated. I don't want it to run out of money. I might have 20 of these jobs, and I would like to have a pool of money. I don't know which one's going to run out. I will dole out money in order to keep them all going. So this is query, fetch, uh, fetch the account balance, and that's, inside of, that, that's triggered by an on-chain timer, right? JavaScript, you expect to be able to run things at a time. We can do that on our blockchain. If that number is below threshold, that's running inside the contract, then I want to deposit to that Akash account. This is all running on JavaScript, this, or it's not currently running in production, this is one of our bounties, running in JavaScript on the Agora chain, able to, and where the payment is send money over IBC. That's the mechanism we had available, ICA was not there. What does that look like? Well, it kind of looks like what I just said. Make an async query to find out the funds that are inside of that particular Akash deployment and just await that answer. And that might go to an Oracle. That might be an ICQ to query the chain over IBC. We don't care. That's just a function. It's abstracted. It's async. It all works. And then once I get that back, if it's less than my minimum threshold, then fund the Akash account. And that might be do a local transfer into a purse because the owner of that account has an account on Agoric and they're watching that. Or it might be send an send a, um, IBC transaction to do a funds transfer. Or it might be reach over to Osmosis to unbun something, move the money. You know, there's all these async things that are nicely abstracted away and fit all together where this contract running on the Agoric chain can just await those to finish. You've got this nice compositional thing that we expect out of other languages. I'll do a couple more, right? I mentioned the unbond, right? If I wanted to, on an Oracle price, unbond on Osmosis, unbond some atoms, transfer it over to the Cosmos Hub and stake it, 
That sounds like a complicated thing, except it's going to be a lot more, well, I've expanded some of it. You know, this is just await sending the ICA packet. And this is one, something that one of our developers on the platform, not at Agoric, one of our third-party developers built, right, is this send ICA packet. There's asynchronous function, bottoms out, and send the ICA packet, and get a promise for the result. So if sending that ICA packet fails, as you would expect in JavaScript, this would throw an exception, and I can do try catch or whatever it is, right? And then here's one that's expanded, right? Send ICA packet to unbond, send an ICA packet to Osmosis to transfer this to, um, to uh, 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 the hub. And then finally here it's, you know, create a delegate message, and this is expanded, this is sort of a very low level representation to just send that ICA message, right? We can do any ICA thing that any chain can do, you can roll it up and abstract it in JavaScript. That's pretty cool. And in fact, they were, you know, so, okay. So, and those are components, some of these were built by bounty hunters on Agoric, or they're being built by uh, uh, the, the, the reference partners that are, that are uh, uh, building applications to ship this quarter. So Calypso is an interchain trading, inter trading app terminal where it can, in one click, take assets from any chain, move the, you know, sell, convert them to USDC or whatever, move them over a bridge, have them land on a third chain and apply some application, right? So take some stuff on Aave, turn it into USDC, move it over Axelar, buy Atom and stake it, right? It's, you know, that turns out to be one of the key use cases that they see is I've got assets here, I want to do that thing over there, make it happen, I don't care, just make it happen in one click. All orchestrated by smart contracts on Agoric. Now these guys are also the ones that are building the MetaMask Cosmos snap. Right? This is 30 million developers, or sorry, 30 million users have MetaMask. We would like to have use cases where in some cases it's people that were already on, on, on Ethereum that we now want to invite over to awesome applications in the Cosmos space. It would be an obstacle if in order to do that they had to install another wallet even if it was a better wallet. So, MetaMask Snaps uses the Agoric JavaScript, the hardened JavaScript that I've talked about in other presentations. It uses that, it uses the same thing that lets us safely run third-party contracts in JavaScript to safely run arbitrary plugins to MetaMask, where they don't have to trust the code of the plugin because nothing it can do can escape the confined set of authority they give it in order to steal secrets, change the time, muck with balances, etc. And so that's being done by uh, Joe Snetzler of Mystic Labs, the people who are doing Calypso. They, you know, in the process, they've done several of these async components, as, ha as have a few others here. And, um, and I brought this up because, like Fede, I think, wherever he is, I mentioned that, and he did not realize that it was using the hardened JavaScript that we built. And we've been working with MetaMask for two years on both the architecture and the elements they needed for hardened JavaScript in order to accomplish that goal. And the same hardened JavaScript is used, you know, in Salesforce, and in, in brokerage terminals and other things. So this is standards track safe JavaScript for building things that is the heart of our system. Okay. Um, we also have Cry in the audience. Creed is a NFT application that they'll be showing off at Cosmoverse, um, and it's built on reusable components in, the, in an NFT toolkit that started with components we built, some that they built, and they're carrying it on beyond that. And then Crabble, I think there's some bite pitch folk around. Crabble is um, a rental application for NFTs with utility, of which multiple people building on the system are creating NFTs with utility, as are, you know, Stargaze and others. And then, so these are things that are in Q3. We are working with these partners to ship these applications, to ship applications for third parties, for the general purpose platform on Agoric and then roll out our developer program. So this is, you know, our goal is Web 2 JavaScript developers are now able to build apps for Web 3. So we will be targeting those Web 2 developers with our DevRels program. This ability to do orchestration on the interchain, that's for you, right? That's what, that's what you guys are doing. And so I'll, I'm gonna come back to that before I go away here, which is what orchestration would make valuable use of the services on your chain or on the assets your chain creates, right? We mentioned before the store your assets in, a, in an exchange until you need them on your chain, right? I can store my Akash in a pool. I need to pay for a, for, for a, a, a service job that's running out of money, move it over, transfer it over, and pay for the job. But 
you know, DAO-driven software development is similar, right? I have a vote of my DAO, it now wants to publish some website, it can, with no human intervention, start up a job, launch the website hosted, in, uh, hosted by Akash. I love the real-world use case of, uh, you know, that, that when, it's, when it's done, uh, it was uh, Jack Zamplin that was saying, so in summary what you're saying is I can just await Akash.setup compute service and then deploy some stuff? And the answer is, yeah, someone needs to build that component. So someone out there, build that component. And then in the, another example, right, I mentioned that the Cread is do, and Cry is doing interesting nested and, and other kinds of novel uh, NFTs for lots of different use cases, but they've got interesting metadata that's got to be stored somewhere. Well, if you wanted to store them in IPFS, that's awesome, but are you sure they're going to be there next month? Not unless you pay for it, and that's what Filecoin is for, with the Axolar integration, with the GMP integration, um, which, which one, of our, one of the third-party developers built is this lovely async GMP integration, where you can't, you know, is, am I sending over ICA, am I sending locally, or am I sending over GMP? We don't care, it's all async, and so you could reach over GMP to Filecoin, fund a storage reserve, and then put your, and then from a smart contract on Agoric, put your stuff there, right? Okay, so what can we do with your assets? What use case do you want? Find someone with a red hat or a yellow hat, because they're the IST folk, and tell us what you need. So thank you very much. Come uh, check out the QR code, which is a has a bunch of pointers to interesting components that other people have already built. DeFi Legos, governance Legos, NFT Legos, and uh, come talk to us. We're excited.